Thank you for joining us. We are here in St. Petersburg, Russia, truly one of the most beautiful cities in the world, and in fact, the home of the Grand Choral Synagogue, which is known worldwide as one of the very most eminently beautiful houses of worship anywhere in the world. We will meet with the leaders of the Jewish community and talk about the challenges they face at this time following these messages. With us now is Cantor Grisha Yakerson. It's a real pleasure to have you with us on the Shalom Show. Likewise. Shalom. Shalom Aleichem. Welcome to St. Petersburg. I must tell you, this is just a spectacularly beautiful city. And the temple, the Grand Choral, is, as mentioned, just one of the most superb, outstanding houses of worship in the world. That's correct. It's, it's the largest in this country and one of the largest in Europe in sense of sitting capacity. We have, when it's filled to capacity, we have 1,300 seats and 1,300 people show up on big, big festivals, obviously. <laughs> and uh, this city still has a very large Jewish community. There are almost 80,000, 90,000 Jewish people here. 
they have uh, been a fil- uh, discouraged to practice their religion, their tradition. They free to practice now, but you have to outreach, you have to bring them back. Because many people just don't remember after so many years of brainwash in, in this country, they don't remember. So we have to bring them back. And um, this synagogue, uh, this year we will celebrate its 120th anniversary. anniversary and uh, this, this, year? this year we will celebrate its 120th anniversary. This year we will celebrate its 120th anniversary. It was built in 1893. But uh, this was the capital city, you know, and Jewish community here started in the early 1800s. And uh, before the Grand Synagogue was built, there were 40 small shtibalach, small synagogues, around that area, actually, around this area. And um, after they finished this big one, a local government ordered to close down those small places. So since then, this is the only Grand Synagogue. But nowadays, we have uh, six Bet Midrashim, six small synagogues spread out, and it was set up by Chabad, and people gathered together on Shabbos for davening just once a week. So it's like small community centers. The Jewish life here is different. The life is different in this country, and people are free to practice, people are free to travel. There is no more passport restrictions. There is no more visa restrictions with Israel. And uh, so it's different, and people can, people can practice, people... Um, There are more people who identify themselves as Jews because years ago it was, you know, it was difficult. Being a Jew was difficult in this country. That's why many people changed their names and uh, because there was a quota for Jewish students and Jewish employees. Now we have Jews in the government (laughs) these days. So um, this magnificent synagogue was never shut down, by the way. This was functioning just for a show. And the doors were open, but very, no, almost no people entered this synagogue because they, they were afraid. They say there was a KGB surveillance and they were taking pictures from across the street, those who entered or exited this shul. This, this synagogue also survived World War II. You know, there was no Holocaust in, in St. Petersburg. This is former Leningrad. So Nazis never got in and they never killed Jews in Leningrad. But everybody was dying here of starvation and of cold because the, there was a siege. And uh, this was like a miracle. This synagogue wasn't even damaged and it survived everything. And... Um, it was restored. This uh, we have main sanctuary, which is enormous, gorgeous, and it's been restored when we received a private contribution from Mr. Edmond Safra, who who put on money to restore the synagogue in Saint Petersburg. So thanks to Mr. Safra, this has uh, been this been restored to its former glory. Even twenty. 30 years ago, this synagogue was still uh, was neglected, a little, uh, neglected because um, nobody took care and state doesn't subsidize uh, any religious communities in, in this country. You have to rely on private donations. So we were fortunate and um, it was neglected but very impressive. And maybe this, this inspired Mr. Safra and he put, he put in money to restore this synagogue. This community is, um, there are all denominations of Jews in, in, this, uh, in this country, in Russia, in the whole of Russia, there are all denominations. And uh, we have um, a separate sitting in our shul, but uh, they all come here and uh, no, this is not the issue and um, we ha- uh, this community runs five Hebrew schools there are five Jewish day schools in, in town total enrollment 600 students and we had 38 boys by mitzvah this year so it's, it's, it's wonderful there was nothing before no schools, nothing 
This is quite fascinating, Cantor. Tell us a little bit about the fact that since Shabbos starts very late here, it's like the land of the midnight sun. Tell us how you practice, actually. 9.30 p.m., we have Ma'ariv, Kabbalah, Shabbos services, and uh, then you have your meal, so it's not, not too late. But Shabbos ends on Sunday morning here. You have to wait until 2 o'clock in the morning. And uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful, no stars, and it, it is always daylight. This reminds me of a visit I had a year ago. We visited in Fairbanks, Alaska, what I believe is the northernmost synagogue in the world. They call it the Frozen Chosen. So it's rather interesting. But tell me, Rabbi, you speak such excellent English, yet you are a Russian. Could you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, I was born here. This is my hometown. Uh, I'm native here. But um, I, was, I was with this shul since I was a child. I was in the choir. That's why this synagogue also called Grand Choral, because of this choral group. We have men's choir. Every Shabbos they chant uh, in, this, in this synagogue, in this sanctuary. And after Soviet Union collapsed, people became more free to travel, and there was a big impact of um, uh, Jewish leaders coming into the country. And we have great Hazonim who came to Moscow, like Malovani. And um, I joined Moscow Synagogue Choir in 1990. And this choir went to Miami in 1996 to sing in a big conservative shul in Miami Beach. And I joined them. And uh, we stayed there for six months. And there were also great cantors coming and going, so I picked up my English and I picked up some beautiful melodies, some beautiful tunes when I came back. I also, I also graduated from the uh, Conservatory of Music here in St. Petersburg. This is the famous um, uh, school of music. It was founded by Rubinstein, Anton, Anton Rubinstein. And um, so I took the, this pulpit here and uh, but this is my home and i'm also visiting country in miami in memphis in uh, the bay area in leeds in uh, strasbourg so i i travel but again this is my home i have my responsibilities here well you certainly are a highly accomplished individual and it's just fascinating to be here in st petersburg i'd like to ask you a little bit as to how you perceive the challenges facing Israel and Jewish life in general at this time in history worldwide. As I say, being a Jew is a lifetime job, wherever you live. And of course, Israel is in our hearts because most of us have, have families in Israel and uh, we, uh, we're just hoping that things will Will do better. Will will come better. Will become better for for the state of Israel, and uh, but it, it is in our hearts and in our minds, and many people from this country, from this Russia, nowadays have two homes, one in Israel, one in Russia. Many Israelis do business in Russia, so um, it, we have a strong strong connections with uh, the land of Israel, and um Again, we are very worried if there is something, something, something bad happening there, and um, it's in our hearts. My friend Nick told me that 30 million Russians died in World War II at the hands of the Nazis, and of course, in the Holocaust, 6 million Jews as well. In fact, people don't realize that it is basically thanks to Russia that the Nazis lost World War II. And uh, anyway, let's not get into a history lesson. Let's talk about what we're here for. And my question is, why do you feel that it's essential for neither Jew nor Gentile ever to be permitted to forget the lessons of the Holocaust? We should, I, I think we should even do more. We have to teach in our, in, uh, kids in our school system about Holocaust. They don't do this, unfortunately because uh, we have, um, there are these young uh, crazies 
skinheads in, in, in this country, in Russia, in other, in other countries in Europe. Because people, again, they, they, they start forgetting things and um, this should never be forgotten. And um, it is very, it, it is crucial that we still remember and commemorate the victims. And let me tell you, in this city we have a Holocaust memorial out of St. Petersburg, 20 miles to the south from this downtown St. Petersburg, we have a Holocaust memorial in the town of Pushkin, where Nazis killed 800 local Jews in September 1941. And every year we have a memorial service and uh, people from this congregation, people from uh, Jewish community center we have in St. Petersburg, we all gather together to recite memorial prayers. And it's important that we bring our kids so they, they should know and never forget. Well, of course, no one should forget, and I applaud all that is being done here uh, in Russia to keep the memory alive. Before we conclude, please tell us about your plans for the future. Bizrat Hashem, this year we will celebrate this anniversary of our shul, and uh, we will hold different levels of events. We will invite um, great chazonim, great, great cantors from Israel, United States, Canada, it's going to be great with God's will, with God's help. And um, personally, I will I will travel to America again to to Darwin Shabbos and maybe some bar mitzvahs, my friends' bar mitzvahs. So it's, but uh, this is my home. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you.
This brings us to the end of our program for today from On Location in St. Petersburg, Russia. I'm Richard Peretz. Thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm.